We're privileged today to host what is called the Prentice Memorial Sermon. The Prentice Sermon has its origins in the will of Mr. Hiram Prentice, who died in 1922. He bequeathed funds to the trustees of the annual conference to support an annual memorial sermon that would have as its topic, quote, the ministry and service as exemplified by the lives and labors of pioneer preachers of the Illinois Annual Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church. And Mr. Prentice was the son of Reverend William S. Prentice, a 19th century preacher and presiding elder of the conference. In addition to being a student of history and very devoted to his father's memory, Mr. Prentice was himself a layperson who was very active in the life of his local congregation in Springfield, as well as Illinois Wesleyan University. So that's the origin of this occasion. Preaching this year's Prentice Memorial Sermon is Dr. Paul Strobel, who serves as the chairperson of the Commission on Archives and History in the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. Dr. Strobel is a native of Vandalia. He holds a BA in history from Greenville College, a Master of Divinity degree from Yale Divinity School, a PhD in religious studies focusing on philosophical theology from the University of Virginia. You can talk philosophical theology after the service if you like. Dr. Strobel is an ordained elder in our annual conference, and he currently teaches at Webster University and Eden Theological Seminary. He is the author of numerous articles, studies, poems, and books covering a vast array of subjects. Uh, he's up to 22 books, but he told me this morning they're short books. It's still 22 books he's written, which is pretty incredible. And he's also a student of history. His first book was the first academic history of Illinois' second capital, Vandalia, where Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas began their political careers. Among the many honors he's received are a Teaching Excellence Award and a Distinguished Service Award from the Honors College of the University of Akron. He's married to Dr. Elizabeth Strobel, who is president of Webster University, and together they're involved in numerous community activities. Uh, if you want to find out more about uh, Dr. Strobel, and there's lots more you can learn, he has a blog and a website you can visit, which is paulstrobel.com. The scripture he's using for this morning's Prentice Sermon is found in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, the first three verses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Let us now welcome Dr. Paul Strobel to the pulpit of the first and finest United Methodist Church in Mount Vernon, Illinois. nice to be here today. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you, Pastor Victor, and all the wonderful uh, music, uh, this service and first service, and the serving teams, um, everybody who uh, makes this a, a wonderful service here at the church. Fun to see the Hollises. Um, Bob was DS when I was starting out in ministry uh, a couple years ago, uh, and um, Nice to see everybody uh, today. Um, I did the uh, Prentice Sermon last year over at Mount Carmel, Illinois, which had their bicentennial last fall. Um, I wasn't going to do it this year, but uh, I met with the Bicentennial Commission here uh, in just January, I believe, um, and saw the sign Zadok Casey Room and thought, hey, I know who he is, awesome. Uh, so I decided, and I'll do it one more time here, um, this, this particular sermon because of his, of course, role as the uh, founder and first preacher here at the, uh, at the church in 1818. And the way I knew about him was when I was writing this book on early Vandalia, a um, long time ago, it was a, as, as Victor says, the first 
academic history of Vandalia when it was in state capital, which was 1819 to 1839. And if you've been up to Vandalia, probably, probably you have, or some of you have at least, <coughs> there's a capital building there that was the third state house. Uh, there were two earlier ones, one where, um, they're not there anymore, but there was one uh, where the newspaper office is in town near the library, and then there was one on 4th Street where I think there's a restaurant there now. I'm looking around it. I should know that because I'm from there, but I'm not sure what's there now. Um, those were the earlier state houses in Vandalia, and that's where um, Zadok Casey served as a state legislator, uh, representing Jefferson County, of course, um, in the 1820s and, and early 18. 30s, um, missed meeting Lincoln and Douglas by just a year or two, uh, perhaps he met them in other occasions. Um, he was elected state lieutenant governor in 1830, um, serving under uh, um, uh, Governor John Reynolds. He was the fourth governor of Illinois. Uh, and as the Illinois uh, Lieutenant Governor, he was also President of the Senate, so he presided over the State Senate during the years he was Lieutenant Governor, which was 1830 through 1833. This is not a history lecture, there's no quiz. Um, uh, you get extra credit points uh, for hearing this, but I don't know what they, they belong to. Uh, I'm gonna get to the sermon part here coming up, but uh, just giving you the what I, why, you know, why I thought uh, Zeta Casey was interesting to begin with. <coughs> um, he served as Lieutenant Governor for three years for the four year term and, um, and was elected to Congress in 1833 uh, where he served several years and, and different terms. Um, I think he died in 1862 if I'm rem remembering that correctly, but he's you know, served several times in, in Congress and uh, also on the 1848 Constitutional Convention. I've got a big old book at home that uh, has the minutes of the Constitutional Convention. Um, also have a book at home uh, by a man named Usher Linder, uh, who was the State Attorney General in the 1830s and, and ser served several different offices uh, in Illinois. I think he died in eight, the 1870s, but he wrote a book about the time of his death, uh, obviously before his death, <laughs> but his book was called Reminiscences of the Early Bench and Bar of Illinois. <coughs> Excuse me. Cough right into the microphone there. Um, where he has several chapters on lawyers and judges who he found interesting uh, and were people he enjoyed meeting during his times of service in Illinois. And he has a chapter in there about Zadok Casey, uh, who he admits was not a lawyer nor a judge, uh, but he found him a, an interesting and important state official uh, during, you know, during the time of their common service in Illinois as a state and national leader. And Usher Linder writes this about Casey, uh, he was a man of fine physical form, about eight feet high, as straight as an arrow, and imposing appearance and address as ever I saw. He was not in the least hidebound or bigoted, but could enjoy a joke and tell as good a story as any layman of my acquaintance. Linder spoke really highly of, of Casey's ability as, a, as the presiding speaker of the Illinois Senate which was his, his major duty as Lieutenant Governor. And Linder writes this, he was one of the most accomplished presiding officers over a deliberative body that the legislators ever saw, prompt and quick in his decisions and generally right. Linder continues that once uh, Casey went to Congress, uh, the Speaker of the House in Congress sometimes called upon Casey to preside on occasion because Quote, he knew more parliamentary law and practice than any member of that body. Again, the Prentiss sermon you know, honors early ministers of the Illinois Conference. The 
usually the focus is on circuit riders or, or, or traveling preachers as they were sometimes called. And um, Casey was not a, a circuit, not appointed as a circuit riding preacher, but he was certainly a pioneer preacher um, worthy of, of note as a founder of this congregation and as a you know, early uh, an important figure in the history of the church as well as the history of the state. Um, you know, the lives of people, you know, at the time were, I don't, would be harsh to us. Um, time traveled me back to 1830, and I probably would not last very long. Uh, maybe that'd be true for, for many of us. Um, life is difficult for uh, pioneers, <coughs> people in towns running business. I, uh, work very hard as they do you know, today as well. Um, you know, traveling obviously by stagecoach or, or by horse. Uh, there were roads of the time. The state legislative journals has lots of laws about laying out roads among different towns. Um, I am one who, when I'm hungry, I go eat. Um, and I pretty much do that all day. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, why, why deny myself? The little boys in the back of my mind says there are, uh, you know, there are Easter cookies still in a Tupperware container over there. Um, 1830, you're hungry. What do you eat? Well, you go to a restaurant, and maybe 25 cents for a meal, that's kind of high. Or you take your gun out and kill something. Um, that would be another way for your, uh, to get your meal for the day. Um, travelers, where do you eat? You know, what do you eat? Where do you get fresh water? Well, you go look for it. Um, you're out on horseback. What's to prevent you from meeting somebody hostile? You know, and by the 1820s and 30s, um, you know, the, there were still tense relations among white settlers and Native Americans, but they were mo more up in Northern Illinois compared to this area. Uh, but there were certainly robbers and you know, difficult people of all kinds out on the road. So, um, you know, traveling may, you know, may be kind of scary in those days. Um, so those who were like Casey, uh, who traveled around among churches and different places and you know, rode to the state capitol uh, on those occasions, you know, like everybody else had you know, difficult circumstances, but maybe there was an extra bit of loneliness and difficulty among the pioneer preachers of the time who you know, had devoted their lives to serving congregations, but were out there in the maybe inhospitable uh, regions of Illinois, just thinking about Illinois in, in particular, um, you know, serving the Lord to get the, uh, to share the word about Jesus. Back to Casey, you know, here, oh, here it is. Um, back to Usher Linder, um, a quote from that same chapter. Um, I'll, see, I'll see if that book is available online. I'll, I'll send one over here. Um, although he did not regularly pursue his vocation as a preacher, regularly, he not infrequently preached when called upon by his Methodist brethren and friends, sometimes at their camp meetings, sometimes in their churches. His great forte, was, however, as presiding officer. When he left the chair and spoke from the floor of the house, although always dignified and sensible, yet he fell far below his performances when presiding as speaker. Now at this point, I want to kind of draw maybe three, at least three lessons from, uh, from thinking about Zadok Casey and how lives of preachers like him and servants like him they may teach us today. Uh, the first one is that we express our faith in the world, in our communities, as, as citizens. The second point is that we, as we do so, we discover our, our gifts, uh, which the Lord then can put to work. And the third point then is that we, you know, the, the faith we have is always something that we have gained from other people. It's, it's shared to us because someone told us about Jesus and someone raised us in the word of Jesus at some point in our lives. So that's the third point. 
Um, first point is sharing our faith and serving other people in the world. Now, in the case of Zedek Casey, he was you know, a, a legislator. He served in state um, state government, uh, you know, as well as Congress later and in other other uh, uh, roles. And I'm not going to talk about politics. That would be awful. Uh, <laughs> Unless we break up into small groups, and <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> uh, I, get, I get nervous laughter everywhere. Um, <laughs> I would not do that. Um, you know, but politics, I find politics interesting. I don't have the temperament or the maybe emotional health even to run for office personally. Um, too way too tender hearted and sensitive to, to get into that myself. But I'm very interested in politics, and I teach. Uh, that subject um, over at the university sometimes. And, and it's important to, to be Christians as citizens, I think. And how do we respond with our faith as citizens? Well, to be informed voters, maybe to write your legislator or your congressperson about some issue that's important to you. Um, you know, maybe you know, just keeping up on things, um, you know, being aware of the the needs of the world that we can discover through the news and through politics, et cetera. You know, it's not the only way we express our faith, but I, you know, it, it can be an important one, I think. In, in, the, in the biblical days, that wasn't possible. You know, we have a gift now that we, uh, people like Paul and others would not have dreamed of. Um, it was an empire. You, know, you did not write a letter to Caesar and say, hey, I'm tired of the roads. <laughs> Uh, there are too many potholes out here. Please you know, get your centurions out here to fix them. Or, um, you know, I'm not paid enough as a slave. Please try to get my wages raised. Yeah, that, it, it was a different time. And our representative democracy today you know, gives us abilities to share our faith and our concern for the world in ways that um, can build upon biblical faith. And I think of that just because of Casey's dual role, I guess, as a preacher, but also as a, you know, as a popular and, and rather accomplished uh, state and national official. And the second point is that um, when we serve in the world and when we serve in our church and when we go you know, try to find ways to serve the Lord in different ways, we discover our gifts uh, as we do so discover something that we didn't know we were good at. Um, Beth and I, my wife, uh, used to meet here in Mount Vernon in the early 80s because I was a pastor way down near Golconda and she was a high school teacher up in Vandalia. And this was a good place for us to meet halfway and we'd hang around Village Square Mall and uh, go to the art museum and just had a nice time on Saturdays, just getting together as we planned our wedding, et cetera. Oh, I'm making him unhappy, I'm sorry. I just got about five more minutes, it's okay. <laughs> then the big man will stop talking. Um, anyway, but in, in, our, you know, in our lives together, Beth and I have just, you know, things we didn't know we were good at, we've discovered in our, our um, you know, in, in our, our, our desire to serve the Lord and the world. Um, like, you know, short books. I want to stress that the books I've written are short, but they were um, Sunday school. Many, many of them have been Sunday school guides um, for which I was hired to do by, by Cokesbury, the Abingdon Press. You know, and that's not something I thought I was ever going to do, but it's, uh, you know, the Lord shows us things um, that we can be good at. Maybe you're good at bells. Maybe you're good at singing. Maybe you're good at uh, teaching. You know, I'll just let your own imagination run wild here on things you may think you're good, may not think you're good at, but you know, try it and see. Um, break out of the box, as they say, and, and let the Lord show you. Not that you may be you know, confining yourself, but just let the Lord show you ways to serve in the world. And I, I think of that because of this ability of Zadok Casey to, um, to be a good presider over a surely cantankerous legislative body. Um, maybe that was a talent he discovered he had just because he was 
uh, thrust into that role and uh, received then the praise and, and respect of people you know, over the years for that ability that he had. When he went to Congress, they even called upon him for that role too. Then the last point is just, uh, again, our faith is something that we receive from other people. Um, I think it's kind of awesome that he was the first preacher here, and I'm just kind of standing up here in, <laughs> you know, in, a, in, that, sh in that shadow. Um, but it's not even just preaching. It's like, why are any of us here? Well, probably because somebody helped us know about faith. Somebody taught us faith. Somebody told us about Jesus. Um, I, I got the Vandalia paper this past week, and uh, one of my Sunday school teachers from back in the 1960s turned 105 uh, years old. And when she was when she was only 100, uh, a few years ago, I had called her and said, you know, hey, you were an awesome Sunday school teacher. Uh, thank you uh, for that. And we talked a little bit about you know this and that, but. You know, think about a Sunday school teacher, a pastor, maybe um, maybe a relative, like my grandma Crawford, who's buried up near Brownstown, Illinois, uh, was a really significant person in my faith. And she had told me at some point she was influenced by a distant relative named Brother Ben Mahan, who died in 1902, I believe. But, uh, you know, her faith got passed to an early traveling preacher himself, and then passed to me, and that's, that's the way of all of us. We all have people in our lives that we can think about and thank, um, either in our hearts or, or actually, uh, for telling us about Jesus. Um, you know, and when we think about founders like, um, like Reverend Casey, uh, you know, those people are significant to us as, as well, even if we can't maybe draw a personal line to that person, that person is still important to us now. So to just to wrap it up, since I'm a teacher and we've got five minutes to go, uh, since I'm a teacher, I'm gonna give you a little assignment that I'm not gonna grade, I'm not gonna ask you to turn in, give you 100 extra credit points. Um, I don't know what that'll go for, but you can tell people we've got 100 extra credit points in, in church uh, this Sunday. Um, Think about somebody who is important to you in your faith, and if they're alive, maybe give them a call or an email or a letter or, or some ex so, so thank them in some way like I did my Sunday school teacher uh, a few years ago, or if they're no longer with us, um, just thank the Lord in your heart for their, the, their, their place in your life and in your faith. Um, you know, in a bicentennial year like this, we think of Zadok Casey, or Zadok Casey, I'm not sure if I'm ever saying his name right, but we think of Reverend Casey and all the pioneers before us who, um, you know, who, who were important for us just being here today and, and learning about the Lord and loving the Lord. Um, <clears throat> so again, um, as we think about ways to express our faith, to learn about our faith, um, you know, to grow in our faith, we thank the Lord for you know, the people who you know, came before us, um, the servants who helped people in any way that they could and taught us to spread the word of the Lord in our own lives and in our hearts and in the things we do in our lives. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this morning and I thank you for this church and uh, ask you to bless, their, bless this congregation and also their ongoing uh, bicentennial commemoration this year and bless us each of us individually as we um, go our separate ways this morning we ask in Jesus name amen remember our app our website findhopedowntown.org through which you can give uh, stay connected or watch sermon videos that you might have